Good. All right, it's my pleasure to welcome Steve Flesh here to the interview area. Uh, Steve, uh, six under uh, 64 today, your, your best round in a U.S. Senior Open championship thus far. Uh, let's, let's start with the morning. Just walk us through uh, that, that birdie stretch from 14 to 18. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I just told uh, Jim Gallagher, um, starting on the back nine, you know, having barely made the cut, kind of, I, I was kind of on the cut number with three holes left yesterday afternoon, somehow made, I birdied 16, 17 to get here today, but starting on the back nine, second group out, not a whole lot of pressure out there, uh, even though, you know, it's a tough golf course, but, um, you know, I three putted my second hole, par three, number 11, from nowhere, from 20 feet, but uh, um, somehow birdied four, you know, made a nice uh, put down the hill on 14. My ball wouldn't even stay steady on the green. It kind of started trickling. I had to remark it twice. But, um, you know, birdied 14, 16, 17, and 18. A nice, nice stretch. Um, hit some wedges close. Made some good putts. And uh, then I think I birdied two, five, and six on the front. Um, but really, the par in the last was kind of my proudest one of the day. You know, driving it in the rough which I normally kind of do at U.S. Opens, um, maybe why I haven't contended in many. I, I can hit it straight sometimes, but not all the time. But uh, nice up and down from about 85 yards on the last hole for par to uh, finish off a nice day. Yeah, when, during the delay when you were in the clubhouse, was there a number, was there a target number that you were looking, looking at that you felt like you needed to get to? Uh, not really. Um, I just I had hit a nice shot into five with a six iron. And I had it five feet, you know, pretty much straight up the hill, left edge. And they blew the horn right when it was my turn to putt. So I got to sit in the locker room and just not think about it. But I just, I was putting so well. I had a lot of momentum. I just was hoping that I got to hit that putt before the horn. But, no, we had a lot of laughs in the locker room. My same Tuesday group, Kevin Sutherland, Paul Goidos were in there. And Jim Furyk and Retief were the subject of a little bit of our fun. So, uh we had a good time, but it was it was pretty nice. It's I can tell you, it's nice to finish for the day because I'm exhausted. Uh, last night, yesterday's heat, and just finishing at 6:30 at night took a lot out of me. So I'm looking forward to a nice dinner and an early early sleep tonight. Yep, you're going to be in one of the final groups um, on Sunday at the U.S. Senior Open. Uh, we'll describe what that what you're feeling like right now it's uh it's not something i've experienced really uh like i said i haven't had much luck in uh u.s opens or u.s senior opens for that matter but um you know it's it's fun to contend and i really have nothing to lose and that's kind of how i play today so i imagine i'll kind of play the same way tomorrow uh and just enjoy it um it's good tough golf course you have to drive it in the fairway which will be my main focus. Uh, I'm ironing it well. I'm putting it well. Fortunately, I didn't have to chip much today, but I got to get the ball on the fairway if I'm going to have a chance. And I've, I, I, I actually have done it fairly well this week, and I'm a better driver of the ball than I let on, but in years past, it hasn't been my forte. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Questions, Stu? Uh, you know, they were perfect this morning. That, that's why I three-putted the second hole of the day. I had a 20-feet uphill on 11 for birdie, and I ran it five feet by thinking it'd be a little slower. Ten greens really fast regardless because there's a big hump in the middle of it. But I got fooled on that one and, and three-putted, but they had great speed. And then when the rain came, I don't know how much rain we got, but it seemed like a lot. Um, boy, they slowed down probably a foot. In my estimation, I mean, I know it's later in the day and they've grown a little bit, but they got about a foot slower. Um, I'm sure they'll be back up to speed in the morning when. But for the guys, the rest of the day, they're they're definitely slower than went before the rain delay. How was your overnight? What do you think when you woke up and, and maybe heard or saw, or even if you had power, uh, damage around? I guess the side of the hotel we're on downtown. My son and I didn't even know we got rain. I mean, we knew nothing other than we got the text that said there's a three-hour delay. Um, but my buddy Goidos, who's on the other side of the hotel, said he th literally thought his window was going to get blown in from the rain. So um, I slept great. I didn't sleep long enough. Um, but 
it's just different. You know, this golf course plays very differently when it's drier than when it's wet. And right now it's very wet. But thankfully, with so much severity in the slopes of the, you know, the fairways, the ball, the water isn't collecting out there. So um, you'll still get a little bit of run. You might get a little bit of mud at times. Um, but it's tough. You got to drive the ball in that fairway. Well, yeah, I mean, even even if the rough was two inches when it's wet, it's just it your club just doesn't get through it. It it the water somehow just makes it denser where it grabs it. But now when it's I mean, I mean, I drove it where it was four inches if it was an inch and it's kind of laying against. You. I mean, it's I joke. I always say it's like hitting it out of a closet full of tennis shoes because you just you never feel like you make contact with the ball and your club never feels like it hits anything but just the grass so it's like a bunker shot the ball just kind of somehow comes out but um i mean i i had a i had a ball uh drive early in the week in the rough i couldn't advance at 50 yards with a full swing with a sand wedge you know on i think it was on 14 yesterday um but it's tough i mean that's you know even if you only miss the fairway by you know three yards and you get outside the first cut it's that deep and thick right there so fairways are plenty wide enough they give you plenty of opportunity to get the ball and you know in play but if you're going to miss you're going to pay the penalty you know it, it really is i mean my the guy that i regularly have caddy for me had back surgery five weeks ago so Griffin's been he's been a great fill in I mean I know he'd love to be able to do it full time but you know he's got to finish up school here this coming semester at University of Kentucky but yesterday you know I kind of had a bad mood going I was you know on the cut number but I really just was I knew I knew how bad he wanted to be here today and uh, you know for him when I, when I finally tapped in for my par in 18 I just kind of said that one's for you, pal, because I know you. I mean, how how bad you want us to be here on the weekend? So I'm trying not to get choked up, but he. I think, I think he wants it more than I do anymore. You know, so um, been fun. He helped me a lot. He's a great caddy. Um, he knows the game, and he's been a great, uh, great, great sidekick for me these past couple weeks when he's helped out. Thank you. The easiest thing that I've always told people that I notice is everybody hits bad shots. And when you're broadcasting or, you know, doing a recap show or broadcasting live, I mean, oh, excuse me, I did the, you know, I was with Fox for years and we did Chambers Bay. And I'm just sitting there and I'm in the 16th tower right on the Puget Sound. And I'm like, man, these guys hit bad shots just like I do. You know, and I already knew it, but... The pressure obviously adds the element, but I always, I always look at it from the standpoint, why do I get so upset when I hit bad shots? You know, like, you just, you just go find it and hit it again. And I think it taught me just, hey, give yourself a little bit of a break. You know, everybody's going to struggle, especially in a U.S. Open or U.S. Senior Open, because it's hard. You know, you, you, it's a more exacting setup, and that's how you have to play it. And sometimes you can't play as aggressively, 15, 20 feet off, you know, toward the center of the green is perfectly fine. Um, but see, my thing is, even if I'm, I know the, like the pins on the left and I'm like, okay, let's play smart to the right. Somehow I already, I know that pins to the left and I'll subconsciously push it at it, you know, or something to make that mistake. But you have to play a disciplined game. And that's what I've, you know, I've learned, you know, you watch Retief and, and Jim Furyk and those guys play and they just seem smarter than me on the course, you know, and I'm like, they, they hit. They don't hit bad shots as often, but you know they do. They just uh, they just handle it maybe better than me sometimes. So I learned just give myself a break, have fun, and and play your game. No matter what, you can't play like somebody else. You're always going to play like your own game. Thanks, Brian. Great. Thank you, Steve. Okay. You got Good it. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you.